Hello everyone. I hope all of you are doing very well. And today we are going to study the structure of disaccharide. Okay. So in this video, we will be studying the structure of sucrose. Okay. So we already know sucrose contains glucose and fructose, right? So basically, in the case of disaccharides, what are we going to do? We are going to take the monosaccharides and then eliminate a water molecule because we already know that. Uh, carbohydrates are polysac uh, what are hydroxyaldehydes or polyhydroxy ketones, right? Correct. So you can have one OH and one OH and then remove the water molecule and join them together. So that's basically the very important part. Okay. So here we go. We have this uh, structure of sucrose. So now let's see what exactly are we going to study in this video. Okay. So we already know that you know sugars are basically two type reducing non reducing I think in the previous video we have already studied right and in the case of reducing sugar the anomeric OH is free and all monosaccharides are reducing all disaccharide except sucrose is non reduced is non reduced all disaccharides are reducing except sucrose okay we already know about non reducing sugar the anomeric OH is not free only sucrose and polysaccharides are basically non-reducing and I think I've already told you what exactly happens in the case of this non-reducing and reducing sugar, right? The anomeric OH, if it is free, it is reducing. If it is not free or if it is joined, it's not, uh, it's basically non-reducing, okay? Now, there are certain points to be remembered before we do the structure. The first point is glucose will always be in the pyranose form. Okay, it has to be in the pyranose form. It may be alpha or it may be beta, right? But it has to be in the pyranose form in all the structures. The next is fructose will always be in the furanose form. Okay, it can be alpha, it can be beta. Okay, so we are going to discuss the disaccharide structures and in all these structures, okay, the monosaccharides are going to be in their natural form in which it is abundant. Okay, yes. So now um, let's see. Now, before we study on a polysaccharide, uh, sorry, or disaccharide on a polysaccharide, now when you are studying this, you are supposed to interpret the structure and understand certain structural aspects. So basically, what should you study in a disaccharide or a polysaccharide? First is the structure. How exactly is the structure obtained? The monosaccharide units, right? The next is type of sugar, whether it is reducing or non-reducing. I will be discussing that when I'm doing the structure. So maybe after a couple of minutes when we get into that slide. Okay, then the next is anomeric carbon, right? Whether the whether anomeric carbon of all the monosaccharide units are free or any one which is not free that you're supposed to know. And then next is carbon linkages. Now this form, this basically is one of the most important part. Okay, so carbon linkages, this is one of the most important part in this study of disaccharide or a polysaccharide. The carbon linkages are important because we have polyhydroxy, that means many OH groups. So when there are many OH groups, the number of linkage combinations are very, very high, right? Correct, we'll be studying that, don't worry about it. So carbon linkages, which two carbon atoms are linked together, right? And then source and occurrence, this everybody knows, right? Whether it is natural or synthetic and then uses, okay? So these are the things that you are supposed to keep into account when you're studying any of the disaccharides or polysaccharide, okay? Now the first disaccharide, uh, we already know that is sucrose. What exactly it is? It is combination of uh, two monosaccharides and it is formed as a result of condensation. What do you mean by condensation? It's basically a loss of water molecule. Now I'm just going to draw a polysaccharide, okay? So uh, let me just draw a simple structure. So let's say if I have one of the polysaccharide like this, okay? So I'm going to uh, consider the pyranose ring only and not anything else, okay? So I'm just going to consider the pyranose ring and um, imagine that, okay, yes. So there are bonds over here, correct? So, so you have, this is the OH. Now I'm just going to talk about in general any carbohydrate. So it's not needed that you uh, just try to 
write a specific carbohydrate because that's basically which we'll be studying when we'll be studying the uh, important carbohydrates and their structures right so i'm going to put an oxygen over here and then i'm going to put a linkage over here correct so uh, just imagine this is the o this is again one of the oh groups correct so now uh, you already know that there is oh here as well correct so OH are basically on many carbons. So the number of combinations are many, right? So the number of combinations are many. So basically what's going to happen? So imagine this is number one, number two, number three, number four, right? And then I have number one, number two, number three, number four. As I said, I'm not specifying which type of carbohydrate it is. I'm just giving an in general idea how the loss of water molecule is going to be there, right? So what do we do here? We are going to remove the water molecule from any of the, yeah, I'm just removing it one from C1 and another from C2. That is H from C1 is condensing with OH from C4. Sorry, I said C2, uh, it's C4, C1 to C4. So what do I get here? So uh, I, I'll be, just imagine this H and this OH is already gone, right? So I'm going to modify the structure here itself and uh, let's see what exactly happens over here. Okay, uh, so the thing that happens over here is uh, this oxygen is already intact, right? Correct, and the group entire OH is already gone, correct? So can you see this is nothing but the disaccharide, right? So this is how you're going to have a disaccharide. Now there are different disaccharides. Some are available in nature, some are already known and some may be, some may be unknown because you already know that nature has its own mysteries and secrets, right? So there are a lot of compounds which are yet to be discovered, right? So you cannot ignore the fact. So C C1 can con condense with C1 itself of other molecule. C1 can condense with C2OH, C3OH, C4OH, and even C5OH as well, right? So there are com number of combinations are going to be very, very diverse, right? So this is the general introduction about the disaccharides. Okay, so now we are going to study the polysaccharides. So again, it's going to be very, very easy for all of you. Okay. Yes. So here we go. We have the structure of sucrose. Okay. Sucrose is alpha G1 beta F2 right so what exactly is sucrose now when i write alpha so uh, let's try to understand this particular uh, thing which i've written right so g1 this g is going to be the first monosaccharide and this f is going to be the second monosaccharide and here it is glucose and here it is fructose right so i've written alpha g1 that means glucose is in alpha form and beta f2 that means fructose is in beta form what are the carbons that are linked one and two right so this is nothing but an understanding of what exactly is the structure right so this is very very simple to understand okay so now let's start with the structure so now you already know the structure of sucrose uh, so it consists of glucose and fructose right so now let's try to write the structure of that now there are different ways of writing but i would recommend this particular uh, this particular technique because it's it's pretty much easy and simple to understand so first i'm going to write the glucose unit okay so i'm going to write this oxygen over here and then i'm going to write this pyranose ring these bonds are here correct now this is nothing but the structure of glucose right so let me concentrate on the carbon atoms which are of interest so alpha d that means oh is going to be down at this particular position so this is one this is two this is three this is four this is five and then this is connected to ch2oh right and you have an h over here Correct. And then second as an OH down, third as an OH up, and fourth as an OH down. Correct. Now I'm going to draw things on the same line. Correct. I'm going to draw things on the same line. Now, what exactly I'm going to do here is with a simple thing. So I'm just going to draw the sugar molecule. Correct. I'm just going to draw the sugar molecule, but this time it's basically the fructose, right? This time it's basically fructose. So it's going to be in the uh, furanose form, right? So I'm going to write the furanose structure and I'm going to complete the structure over here. Correct. Now let me show the bond by using different uh, colors, 
right so it's in the beta form beta form right so it's in the beta form that means the oh is going to be up right so let me first put the bonds and let me just put the important groups over here right so what do we get over here is going to be oh correct and then uh, this is ch2 oh which you already know correct so this is going to be carbon atom number one this is number two this is three now three is going to have oh up then you have four which is going to have oh down and this is the fifth carbon which is going to have h and then this is ch2 oh now this is the point where most of you can mess up saying that this is the fifth carbon and put oh down as well but you already know that fifth carbon has been used up to form the hemiacetal linkage right so now if you could see here this is nothing but alpha d glucose and this is nothing but beta d fructose right fructofuranose basically so the connections are one carbon atom number one is connected to carbon atom number two so basically what is going to happen over here is that we are going to remove the water molecule there is no hard and fast rule i can remove this h and i can remove this oh or i can remove this oh and i can remove this h as well correct so what do we get so this oh and this h is going to disappear so let me make it disappear here itself correct so when i make it disappear what exactly happens right there was this o over here now i'm going to draw the bond correct so this is nothing but the disaccharide structure okay let me make it more easy uh, by just doing some little bit modification so what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to uh, draw a bond over here correct so this is nothing but the sucrose molecule correct so sucrose this is nothing but uh, gluco uh, you can say glucopyranosyl fructofuranoside this is one way but i think that's not needed for you right now let's have a look at these so can you see this is the anomeric carbon right so this is the anomeric carbon right so this is the anomeric carbon and this is the anomeric carbon right so in this case both the anomeric carbons are linked they are not free that means it means that they are not free so when they are not free you can say this disaccharide is basically a non reducing sugar okay so this disaccharide basically is a non reducing sugar right and the linkage is c1 of glucose is linked to c2 of fructose this is alpha form this is beta form right so this is basically the linkage correct so this is nothing but the structure of sucrose very very easy to understand okay so uh, can you see this itself explains out everything right so this itself explains out everything structure of fructose okay so which carbon atoms are linked and everything i have already shown up here correct so this is nothing but the structure of sucrose in this particular slide now so this is nothing but the um, this is nothing but the image and i have exactly drawn the same way right so now sucrose let's see certain details okay so before we move on to the structure i'm just going to delete my written work so structure type of sugar anomeric carbon carbon linkages source and occurrence and then uses now let's try to fill these columns uh, fill these uh, points one by one structure it's it's basically alpha g1 right alpha g1 and then beta f2 right type of sugar is basically non reducing okay so it's basically a non reducing sugar no carbon atoms are free no anomeric carbon is free carbon linkage is c1 c2 right source and occurrence normally sugar cane is basically the source and what exactly uses use is pretty much simple to understand what exactly is the use right it is normally used for household purposes right so this was all about the structure of sucrose i hope all of you were able to understand this video very well Okay thank you very much for watching the video and see you in the next week thank you